Oh, wow. Uh, that their beer is called Living in Arabica from Double Me Care Brewing. A soulful brown ale with cold brew coffee. And oh man, can you taste the coffee in that? Um, wow. Um, yeah. The other beer of theirs that I've tried um, also is sort of a pun on a James Brown lyric. But this one is Living in Arabica. Very cool. Um, but as important as beer is, I have mail to be opened. So let's get on with it first one says LED module. That scalpel is still stupidly sharp. They're close. It's an LCD module. It's another 1602 uh, LCD. This one looks like it's blue. Um, let's see what else I've got of those. I think I've got another one around here somewhere. Yeah, there's those. Oh, I already have a blue one. Okay. Huh. I thought I was buying... Darn. Oh, well. And the blue ones are nice. But I kind of was hoping for a different color one. I guess I... Uh... New 1602 16 by 2 character LCD display module controller blue Arduino. I got mine from... XNJ 2016 or something like that. Uh, I got it at auction for dollar sixty-eight. I think it was. Um, he's currently got a few on or for sale and on auction, but at a higher price and with a stupid amount of shipping. So I'm going to link you to this search listing sorted by shipping and price lowest first. Price and shipping lowest first. Yeah. Uh, which is how I always search eBay. Okay, the next thing in. It says LED module. Popular choice. Oh, it has LEDs on it. Okay. What is this guy? Oh, this is... One of those um, LiPo voltage tester... Or, so, basically, this one connects to the plus and minus of a multi-cell lipo pack and then connects to each of the positions in between the pack um for the higher voltages they go together in series do i have any kicking around here uh, it doesn't matter um they just go together in series and then this one can this guy can monitor the voltage of each individual cell plus the overall pack voltage and we'll scream an alarm through these little buzzers here if uh, any of them go below the uh, their low voltage cutoff threshold, which can be handy, and I am planning on building a multi cell pack as soon as I get everything that I need and a bit of time, so this will come in handy for that. Two in one indicator, one to eight S lipo lithium ion battery voltage tester, low voltage buzzer alarm from this. Xlang, uh, I have trouble with some of these Chinese names. This guy here, uh, 2016. Um, I paid a dollar 66. I did not pay any shipping at all, so things have changed since I purchased it, as it says up here. So what do we say here? Uh, for one to eight series lithium battery, accuracy 0.01 voltage plus or minus. Uh, group display voltage 5 to 4 point or 0.5 to 4.5. That's for individual cells in total. For the entire pack is 36 volts. Alarm voltage setting range either off or 2.7 to 3.8 volts for a low. Uh, 2.75 is what I've seen for the lowest of the low voltage cutoff before you start damaging the battery. Um, so that's reasonable. A low voltage cutoff of 3.8 is pretty high, but whatever. Face up the pin against the other uh, Battery white plug oh, on the left side. So there is a wiring harness that can go with this, or you can just wire straight to it. I may have to look up the wiring harness just to get their color code figured out. But uh, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Actually, that wasn't too hard, and I didn't even have to go online to find it. The pinout is marked right on the end there. So the most positive of your pack goes there. The most negative of your pack goes there. 
and then the connections between the first and second cell go there, second and third, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, sixth, seventh, seventh and eighth, and then, yeah, so that's pretty straightforward, and uh, I'm going to have to find a manual for this guy, I guess, to explain how many different presses of the button it takes to get into each different mode, to set the alarm on and off, and change the threshold voltages and stuff like that. That shouldn't be too hard to find. These things are pretty common. What do we have here? Solder piece, it says. Okay. Hmm. Some kind of metal strip or strapping or something. Oh, I think I know. Is this, yeah, this is a nickel strip for soldering up you're soldering between the uh, lithium cells to create a pack. Hang on. Yeah, this is the stuff that would normally, in a pack, be, I guess, spot welded between one cell and the next one to create the series connections that make up the pack. Okay. So, as you can see, I've got some cells handy that I've salvaged. Um, for my experiment in building a pack for my uh, salvage drill. I'm not expecting anything amazing because, after all, it is salvage cells. But previously, when I've uh, built up a couple of power banks from kits, I've used bits of brass strip and soldered it on, and that works. I, but I figured I could find some of this stuff cheap, since it is the official stuff that is, you're supposed to use if you're doing it properly. I'm still not going to do it properly because I don't have a spot welder. Um, I've seen a few people experimenting using supercapacitors and stuff, but that didn't work all that well for them. I may just try soldering this again and risk overheating these. Yes, I know I'm putting myself at risk. 2 slash 3 meters, 8 millimeter pure nickel plate, nickel strip tape for lithium 18650 battery spot welding tool. I got this from Pretty Line which I'm sure they're a reputable high-tech seller of things. I'm fairly confident that I chose from this list 3 meters, a 0.1 millimeter, and 8 millimeter wide. And yeah, there you can see the application of it. There they've got some, some packs paralleled up. You can do all kinds of things like this. Build your pack however you want. It can be a little fiddly. Like I said, I've never worked with the nickel before. Hopefully I can uh, I can solder it because, like I said, I don't have any welding spot welding tools. Wow. That's almost as janky as what I envisioned myself doing. I probably won't use masking tape, though. I'll at least go as high-tech as Kapton. The next thing, secrecy stamper. That's interesting. Oh, I remember this. Ah, and it's pink. How nice. Isn't that the traditional color? Well, big quads sort of started that tradition. So, how do I open this? There we go. Okay, I remember this thing now. So what it's for is basically, it does that, only I don't need to do it by scribbling with Sharpie. You just do that and roll it on. And it sort of obscures the stuff there. Okay, um, a bunch of what's already in my mailbag stash has got that on it, but once we get uh, a little bit further ahead in the future, I'll start using this thing. I'm guessing it was fairly cheap. It was probably an auction, because I wouldn't have gone out of my way to look for something like that. Color Roller, Messy Code, Self-Inking, Stock Stamp, Privacy Confidential Seal Guard from LED Plaza 2016. This was a dollar thirty uh, free shipping, and I was wrong. It was a buy it now. It wasn't a uh, an auction. I guess I was looking through LED Plaza and spotted this thing. Anyway, not too much to say about it other than uh, what I've already demonstrated. So, oh, there's two colors available, and I guess I must have asked for a random or not specified. So random it was. Pink's a good choice though. Auto parts trim. Hmm. Can my auto mechanics in my audience guess what this thing's going to be? It's 
a spudger a plastic spudger okay that part's fairly solid so you know the it's a little bit thicker at that end than this spudger and this one is fairly flexible um whereas these other ones they're a little bit thicker so it's thinner yeah the pry bar end is thinner than that it's a little bit wider there it's a little bit narrower there oh, that should fill a fill a gap in my spudging capabilities auto removal open tools door clip kit panel trim radio dash audio installer from sc auto parts i got this at auction for 13 cents and he currently has one on auction right now, and it's only a penny, but uh, there's a day left, and I'm recording this a few days before you see this, so it will be done. But I'll put a link to this auction anyway. Um, you can use the search terms to find uh, something more current. But these things seem to be on uh, available all the time and for cheap. Oh, goody. This part is compatible with 16,052 vehicles, including this massive list. Nice to see a wide compatibility for a frickin' spudger, guys. Jeez. You know what? That went by just a little too fast. Let's grab another one. This says LED module and LED module. What do you want to bet there's an LED on it? Oh, two different modules. One in wrap and one not in wrap. So what does this one have to say for itself? Doesn't say anything, but we can be pretty sure that this is probably either step up or step down to five volts for charging uh, phones and things, I'm guessing. Let's see what the other one is, and then we'll go to the listing. Since they came together, they're from the same seller, obviously, and they should be easy to find. That is almost the same thing. Um, just slightly smaller form factor on the board. That one see anything? Oh, that one does see anything on the bottom. Okay, um, DC six to thirty-two volts. Uh, DC, DC, QC and QC. Oh, it's a quick charge compatible charger. Oh, that's okay. And it uses ver the various different formats. QC and QC2, that's the uh, Qualcomm protocol. Um, but Samsung has their own protocol. And Apple, of course, has their own protocol. And various other phone or manufacturers. Because nobody can comply with freaking standards. Everybody's got to do what they do their own thing. So I'm guessing that these are probably very similar Okay, the first one that we looked at, QC 3.0, 2.0 USB fast, quick charging module, DIY charger board, phone charger car from this guy again. Wow, I bought a whole bunch of stuff from him. He must have had a bunch of auctions on um, right around that time. Uh, anyway, currently going for 328 with shipping. I paid $1.70 without shipping at auction. Sports a variety of mobile phones, Qualcomm, Huawei, uh, integrated media techs, uh, Android and Apple charging. Yeah, so all these damn companies just will not comply with a single standard. They all have to build their own. Annoying. Uh, so it is uh, an 8 to 24 volt input uh, buck converter. The input must be higher than the output, probably by about a volt and a half or two volts. Uh, and since the quick charge protocols will go will boost up to 12 volts for charging, you need at least 15 volts for your input to uh, to do the fastest of fast charging, which is a little bit more than you can get out of your lighter plug in your car most of the time. You can usually get about 13 and a half or maybe 14 volts depending on what your uh, alternate is doing, but you'd still be able to get to uh, a one of the steps i think there's a nine volts nine or ten volt step that you'd probably be able to charge at otherwise you could connect it to a laptop uh, charger which usually runs at about 19 volts and you'd be able to get your fastest of fast charges uh, output adaptive 3 to 12 volts according to the protocol although what the hell three volts would be useful for i don't know um 
TVS over voltage tube. Uh, tube, usually tube means LED in bad Chinese translations, but I'm guessing maybe that's just an over voltage diode. I don't know. Uh, anyway, package includes one new Digispark, Digispark Kickstarter. No, no, it doesn't, you lying bastards. And the other one, QC32, same description exactly, but a slightly different product. Um, right now they're selling, again, this guy, he's selling it for three fifteen plus shipping. I got this one for $1.78 at auction when I bought it with free shipping. And I'm guessing this says all the same things down here, but who can tell? Oh, there we go. Yeah. I could run it through my, uh, my load tester. I'll do that later. I'm not going to do it during this video. I think this video is starting to get long now. Initially, it was being nice and short, and now it's too long. Whatever. Uh, there we go. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much all the same things. There's all the different protocols again. Yeah, at least it's got that correct this time. Well, as usual, quite a wide uh, variety of things. Some that we've seen before, like that one we've got several different of. But the rest of these are all new items that I've never played with before, so that should be fun in the future. Let's go through the shipping times. The LiPo voltage monitor took three weeks. The spudger took five weeks. The privacy guard thing took five weeks. The nickel strip, I think, was the winner. It took 28 days. No, it wasn't. The LCD took three weeks. That was the winner. And these two uh, charge modules took... One month minus two days, so 28-ish days again. Cool. Um, I know I'm going to use all of these things at some point. Um, the uh, My new phone and most of the, I think almost everybody's phone in the house now runs quick uh, this these quick charge protocols. So having a few of these things around is probably going to be useful. Um, like I said, I was going to build a battery pack for my... Uh, my drill that currently has Nike heads in it, so that should be interesting. And that goes with that. This will make an appearance in future mailbags. Well, you won't see it necessarily, but you'll see the results of its activities. Spudger, always good to have those around. Anyway, thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate that. Um, comments and questions down below, you know the drill. I'll, I'll respond to pretty much anything down in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation about these things and your experiences on them, especially things like this that I haven't played with before. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Patreons. Thanks guys. Um, thanks for uh, preventing me from going broke doing this. Uh, I, I keep seeing from my, my statistics and stuff that an awful lot of people seem to like these mailbags and oh, I'm ordering this stuff anyway. So why not show you, right? Thanks for watching. Cheers.